Okay. Here we prove the following interesting result about measurable sets. So we start with a triple X, S, M, where X is a universal set, S is a semi ring, and M is sigma additive measure. We assume that we did the extension, we did the Lebesgue extension, and we now have the triple X, F, and M star. F is the sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable subsets, and M star is the external measure on it. Now, the, the problem which I will prove here, uh, I'll call it lemma, it says this, every measurable subset can be represented like so. There is a element in the minimal enveloping sigma algebra, remember, R of sigma s, that was the symbol we used to denote the minimal enveloping sigma ring, in fact, sigma ring around the semi-ring s, but given the conditions which ensures this extension, this ring, in fact, will be sigma algebra. Because it's minimal, it will be within my sigma algebra of measurable subsets, that's the meaning of the term minimal sigma algebra. So, the statement says that for every measurable subset, there is an element in the minimal sigma algebra, and there is a, another measurable subset, A dash, with the condition that A dash is measure zero, and A is a union of B and A dash. If you think of the example of a semi-ring of half open intervals, the result basically says that every Lebesgue measurable subset on the real line is the union of the Borel set and the set of measure zero. That's basically the content of this result. Now, uh, in order to prove this result, I will need another smaller result, another auxiliary result, which actually sometimes helpful on its own in its own right. And it says this: if I have a measurable subset, then for every epsilon bigger than zero, there are two elements of the minimal sigma algebra around the semi ring S, with the property that they uh, the B is a smaller, uh, is strictly embedded into A, or simply embedded into A, and C is a larger than A, so A is embedded in C, and the external measure of the set difference between the C and B is less than given epsilon. Of course, these two sets, two subsets B and S, from the minimal sigma algebra, they, in, in principle, may depend on epsilon. So first we prove the smaller lemma. Uh, we fix an epsilon bigger than zero. We use the definition of the peg measurability, which says that there must be a set A dash from minimal ring enveloping S, such that the M star of the symmetric difference is less than epsilon. Now, I need to recall also what the external measure is, and if you look for the definition, you will see that actually we have a sequence of elements of my initial semi-ring such that the sequence produces a covering for the, for the symmetric difference and such that the such that we have to see this double inequality so the external measure of this symmetric difference is controlled by the sum of the individual measures of the covering, and we have also this opposite inequality with the extra epsilon here. This is the definition of the infimum, which sits in the formula def which defines external measure. Now, I observe straight away actually that this external measure is by itself is less than epsilon, so actually the right hand side here is less than 2 epsilon. Now, here's the construction for this. We need to present the set B and the set C such that these two things happen, One, that the B is a subset of A and the A is a subset of C and such that this happens. So here's the construction for B and for C. B will be taken like so. It will be this A dash uh, subtracted the union of all of this covering because this is a sigma algebra. This element will be in the sigma, in the sigma algebra. And C will be the element like so. Again, because this is a sigma algebra, it is sigma algebra because, yes, this combination will be the element of the sigma algebra. So now what we have to do, we have to test for these two subsets, B and C, these two conditions, this condition and this condition. And that will finish the proof of this lemma. So 
I will probably skip the testing of this condition. It's uh, it's a standard way of uh, you you have to follow the standard way of uh, showing the embeddings between subsets. Take the element from here, any element, and show that it will land here. And at the second stage, you take an element from here and you show it land. The element will land up here. I'll I'll leave it for your independent study. Uh, now, in order to see this, I will claim another set relation. I will claim this set relation that this set difference between C and B is in fact covered by my original covering. And so now I can conclude that the external measure of the set difference C and B is controlled by the external measure of uh, A symmetric difference with a dash plus epsilon, which is, like I mentioned earlier, is controlled by two epsilons. And that finishes the proof of this lemma. <coughs> now we can finish the proof of this lemma. Now I choose, it's an interesting proof actually, I choose epsilon to be 1 on n. For each such epsilon, according to this uh, inner lemma, I have a b and a c subset, and this time I will call them bn and cn. They are coming from minimal enveloping sigma algebra with the condition that they embed, bn embeds, it's, uh, is embedded in A and A is embedded in C. And with the second condition that the external measure of the set difference is controlled by epsilon, which is in our case is 1 on n. Now again I make a choice, I make an explicit choice for this B set and for this A dash set. Here's the choice for the B set. It will be the union of all of these Bn's. Again, it's a countable union. This is a sigma algebra, so this will be the element of my sigma algebra. For the A dash, I will choose the set difference between A and this B. Now, what I claim is that the set difference will be a subset of this quantity. Look at this. Because every A is a subset of Cn, and that's true for every n, it is also true that a is a subset of the intersection of all cn's. That's, that's, that's why I replaced a with the larger set intersection of all cn's. Remember, this embedding, this embedding true for every n. That's why a is embedded in, that's why a is in fact embedded into the intersection of your cn. And for the b, I put what I have here, that's the definition of my b. Now, a quick rearrangement of these things shows actually that this in, is embedded into this intersection, and that's relatively easy to see, right? If you have an element here, which means the element belongs to every Cn, and it doesn't belong to every Bn, that's what it said here, it belongs here, it doesn't belong here, so it belongs to this intersection. And uh, I finish it by saying that actually because this is the intersection across every n, this big intersection will in fact be inside every individual set difference like that. And now I can use the properties of my external measure, and I use that by saying that the external measure of this set is controlled by the external measure of this set. This individual external measure is controlled by 1 on n, that's supposed to be by the construction. And that's true, and that is true for every n, that is true for every n, 1, 2, 3, and so on. A number independent of n, such that it's less than every fraction like so, for every n, just such number can only be 0. And that finishes the proof of the this lemma, right? We just constructed my b, which is a Borel set, or in general it's a set from the minimal enveloping sigma algebra, such that my original A is the union of B and some extra set A dash. And that's how we constructed this A dash. And the measure of this A dash is, in fact, zero. <coughs>